I want you to know today is that just continuing with what uh, Steve has been teaching us for this month about the race, talking about the race. How many understand that there's a race that you run, that you're a part of every day? Your life is full of races, you know, and I'm not talking about color and creed, but I'm talking about purpose. I'm talking about direction. I'm talking about the ordered steps of the Lord. They, it, it's a race, man. And it's not one that we're going to run fast. I don't know about you, but I don't want to finish my race too fast. That's too much I want to do on this earth. That's too much kingdom that I want to see come and be manifest because of who I am. I want to see the kingdom that's going to be manifested because of who you are. Are you excited about the kingdom that's in you? Are you excited about the kingdom that's to come? That's part of your race. Thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's part of your race. You can't live and be righteous and say that you're a son of God and not recognize that the kingdom being manifested on this earth is part of your race. It is. It always has been. But it, it's, it's awesome when we, uh, when we begin to recognize and that revealing comes to us. That, man, I'm running a race. That is causing heaven, uh, causing the kingdom to be manifested on earth. You know, I don't have to die. I don't have to wait till the great by and by to see that place, to see portions of that place. I am a reflection of heaven. I am what heaven is. I am what God is. I am his son. Everything that he desires for me there, I can have it here if I do right. If I if I if I continue to hear, uh, Miss Miss Kaylee Parker this morning was talking about a frequency, and you know having a frequency that was so in tune and, and, and so connected that it literally I might freak you out with this I probably shouldn't say it but I will. Go ahead, go ahead. But she was so in tune with a frequency that when she walked by a natural radio it came on and when she walked back by it shut off freaked out it would have freaked me out but to be sure she walked back by again it came on she walked back by the second time it shut off come on somebody that's a frequency right there that's a manifestation and seeing those are the things that the church is afraid to talk about See, we can call up the psychic and we are comfortable with that psychic person telling us all day about spiritual things that are manifested on this earth. That's okay. Oh yeah, my dead father, he talking. Oh yeah, I can hear him talking to you right now. I'm okay with that. I even pay you to tell me that. But I can come to church and know God, develop a relationship with myself and allow the revelation of the earth that the kingdom being manifested on this earth dwell in me, work in me and I won't need to talk to my dead father because I got a living father that's already speaking to me he's already saying good things I just need to learn I just got to get the right frequency I got to get the right tune I got to allow my body to become sensitive enough I got to allow my ear to hear what the father is speaking to me stop being a coward stop being afraid of the things that are God we have allowed the earth and those things that are unrighteous to dwell in the things that are meant for us that spiritual realm, that thing that is beyond the, our senses, the things that we see. Still talking about a race, y'all. Now, I'm not talking about a race, but we're talking about the race. That is what we're speaking of throughout the whole month. Our theme is the race. But our particular is the thing that he wanted me to point out to you is that, excuse me, what can be expected during the race? When you're in the midst of the race, when things are happening, while you're there, what can you expect? Now, I can tell you all day long about a natural race because, you know, believe it or not, I used to be <laughs> pretty athletic. <laughs> yeah. 
And running was what I did. That was part of my specialty. I was running. I was a runner. That's what I did. And even though I didn't like long distance run, but I did run. And one of the rare races I would run from time to time will be what is known as the 400 or the 800. And, uh, and you know, it, it, it's funny because it's always the same. You know what it takes to run that race. You know what it takes to, we talked about preparation last week. You know what it takes to prepare for that race. And you know what it feels like every time you step up to the line, but the feeling is never different. The excitement that churns on the inside of you. I don't care how many times that you play a football game, you play basketball, whatever thing you com compete in that you've ever competed in, there's always a churning on the inside of you. And I remember just that churning every time I got ready to run my race. And during that race, I remember, you know, you take off, pow, pow, hit that butt, pow, come out the box. You know, you got your form, you're looking good, you know, and all that. Breathing well. You know, you got it. You running, and you get around that first part. You doing good. Still got you. I just looking good. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> you know, because sometimes because it was an 800. You know, you didn't you didn't run this fast, so you kind of paced it out. You did good. Make it around that curve the first time. You you miss him. Y'all know who I'm talking about in a minute. But you miss him the first time. But you keep running. Come down that first straightaway. Hit that second curve. Yeah. Not doing so well. You get on that back straight away, that's when you need to turn it up. You turn it up. Okay. Woo. Turn it up. You got to make up ground or you pulling away. One to two. But it's something about that back curve, that last curve. When you come around that last curve, there's somebody waiting on you. <laughs> and if you ever ran track, you know his name. What's his name, Matt? It's the bell. <laughs> yeah, he going to get you. <laughs> And there's a, we call it the bear. That bear, he kind of waits for you on that last turn, that last curve. And when you come around that last curve, he jumps out at you and goes, raw, and jump right on you. <laughs> and all of a sudden, all that little pretty stride you had changes. You know, even your face changed. You know, at first you were looking good coming around that first time. But when you come around that second time, that bear jump on you, all this change. Now you look like this. <sighs> you know, all that breathing you was doing. All that smooth breathing you would do, you. <laughs> and you hear him, you hear him. Come on, Archie. Come on, Archie. And you like, man, leave me alone. But you hear him. They're coming. And, 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 and all you can do is go like this. But you still trying to make it, trying to make it, trying to remember all that technique you learned, all that preparation you put in. Man, it comes into play. You know, but that bear on you, he don't play, boy. He'll drag you down. You know, and that's just a physical race. That's a natural race that we run. But how many know that your spiritual race can feel like that sometimes? You know, there are times where you take out, you're in the middle of your race, and you're just feeling good. Got your strive on. You know, you're praising the Lord on the way. Hallelujah. You know, and everything. Feeling good. But then out of nowhere, that bear jumps on you. Uh -oh. And then what you do? Your praise ain't so pretty now. Instead of hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> it's different, right? <laughs> that bear would change your race. He would change the way you run it when he jumps on you. But how many know there's strength in your praise? There's strength in your preparation. There's strength in your mindset. And the things that, see, and, and it's easy when it's good. But you know what, if you, if you run a, 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 a 400, you usually practice at least an 800. That's your, that's your daily workout. You don't just practice running a 400, but you practice running an 800. And if you're an 800 dude, then you're gonna do what? You're gonna practice running a mile. So you're gonna always double, and our mile runners will always work out with the cross country runners, right? Am I, am, I, am I saying something to you? Because the race that I'm preparing for or the preparation that I'm putting in, I'm, I'm going to put in more than it takes, more than I can imagine. So even if I'm a 100 meter dude, guess what? I'm killing that 200. I'm running it all day, every time, every chance I get. I may even put in some quarters. 
Why? Because the race that I'm running, okay, it's only 100 meters, but guess what? I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to prepare for more. I'm going to prepare for that bear. Why? Because I want my stride to be as nice and smooth as it can be when I come across that finish line. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a victory. You know, that's going to, that's a, a reward. That's, you know, it's going to come. I want it to come as easy as I possibly can. Let's be honest. I don't want to have to struggle through everything. Sometimes I want my victories and the things that I overcome to be as easy as possible. But that does not happen without the right preparation. Even in your spiritual life, your victory doesn't have to always be a struggle. The things that you accomplish in the Father don't have to be a struggle. Many times, the way you accomplish things through the Father will determine, will often tell your maturity level. And how do you know? Because if you barely make it, oh, yeah, thank the Lord, I barely made that. <laughs> the rough side of the mountain, thank you. <laughs> No, that's a smooth side. You didn't need to go to the other side of the mountain. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's about the preparation. My maturity is going to be defined in the times that when, when things are good. What are you doing then? At practice. That could be, believe it or not, as much as we sometimes hate practice. I used to dread going, I ain't going to lie. I ain't always like going to practice. I'm like, dang, man, would it rain? That was a thunderstorm or something. I don't feel like practicing today. He felt like that. But I will, I, will, I will practice. Times of practice are like, they can be compared to those times when things are good in our spiritual life. Why? Because it's preparing me for the race. So if I was to have a better attitude, the best athletes I know, they love practice. I often hear my son say that one of the, things he one of his favorite athletes is Michael Jordan and those different guys and he watches he not only just watches their play and their feats but he takes pleasure in watching their workouts he wants to see just how hard that athlete worked that's the quality of an athlete for he measures the quality of the athlete not by how many points he scored but how hard did he work what does he eat what is his eating regimen what is his workout regimen? How hard does he put it in? And not only that, but what's his attitude when he's going through that practice? He loves to say, I heard him say several times, you got to love the process, Pop. You got to love the process, Pop. That's what he used to work me out, used to train me. And uh, it was serious too. He used to train me. And sometimes we'd be on that, we'd be on that little coldest, our circle, we be running that circle trying to meet a time and we'll be running by. We be coming. He said, come on, Pop. Come on, Pop, you can do it. 30 seconds, Pop, 30 seconds. Come on, Pop, you gotta love the process, Pop. Love the process, baby. <laughs> Several things be going through your mind. Like, boy, if you want my son. <laughs> <laughs> It was, it, it was real though, right? It was real. You, had to, you have to change your mind. You have to change your mindset. People, come on, you gotta love the process. Whenever you're not in the midst of a race, you gotta love the process of preparing for my next race because when I cross the line, this time I wanna cross pretty. I don't wanna be all frowned up. Woo. Oh God. No, I wanna cross in stride, baby. I wanna look good running this race. I want to represent my father. I want my father to be glorified in how I run my race. No matter how difficult, no matter how hard it is, I'm going to glorify my father in how I run my race. Why? Because I prepared for it. I enjoyed the process. My quality is not in my, my reward, but my quality is in how I ran the race. It's in how I prepared for the race. Woo. I got some things I want to get to you. Kaylee, I'm so 
blessed by your song today and even what you said in the song because it was what the Father spoke to me. And uh, let me find it. And I looked up. I def- Yo, excuse me. Wow. Take this thing off or something. Excuse me. I defined the word, I defined a race. What is a race? You know, I looked that up according to uh, Google and Webster's Dictionary and all that stuff. And basically, it gave an answer that it's a competition or it's about competitors competing, you know, to run a set course, wanting to be the first, wanting to be the best, wanting to uh, uh, be the one that set the best record, wanting to be the one that everybody else measures up to. And that's in the natural. But in the spiritual, the race that I run, the person that I'm looking to measure up to ain't a natural man. The thing that I'm trying to achieve in my reward is to look more like him. To become more like the father. So whatever record's being set, whatever record's there, you know what? One set by natural man. But that's what I'm striving to. And he, if he set a record for me, if he set a point for me to make, then I could do it. But the question is, how much preparation am I going to put in in order to achieve that, what the Father set before me? My goal, my desire, the thing that I want. Who, how, how bad do you want to look like the Father? How much of a son do you want to be? It's not just going to come because I have faith. Uh oh. It don't come by faith alone. It don't come by works alone. But it comes by what? Works and faith. I can't have one without the other. The Bible clearly says one without the other is dead. I must walk in faith. Yes, I walk by faith. And guess what? I work too in faith I can't have one without the other I don't care how hard uh, how well you train this body it ain't gonna do you no good if you don't have any faith to coincide with what you're doing if you, and faith brings direction it gives you something it allows you to be able to see the set course without faith you can't even see the set course you don't even know what race you're running you exercise and you ready to go. You look like you can win a triathlon. But your faith is out of whack. There's no faith there. So whatever race you run is going to be in vain. Why? Because you cannot see it. You can't even see the set course. And if you're not prepared, if you don't have the works, but you have all this faith and you see the set course that he's put before you, you're going to be scared. You're going to be totally intimidated. That's why so many of us, sometimes when we see what the Father, ooh, Lord, that's too much. I can't do that. How am I supposed, the first thing come out of your mouth, how am I supposed to do that? Why? Because you have not prepared. Listen, listen. Preparation doesn't need a course or a set course. Preparation anticipates the set course. Okay? Your faith allows you to see the course. And as you begin to see the course, now you can begin to hone in your preparation. But if you just wait until you see the course before you start exercising, guess what? When it's required of you to do 50 push ups, you might not get but 10. You ain't done nothing. You might get two, somebody said. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I, you know. I really don't know. But Father, I'm preparing myself. Guess what I'm doing? You know, man, I'm just working. I'm working right now. Because I know the race is coming. I know even in the midst of this race, whatever, when the race comes, I'm going to be ready for it. And when I'm in the midst of the race, guess what? I'm going to run that thing good. 
even when that bear hits me, I'm just going to look back at him. I'm going to keep on running. If I keep my stride right, he, he can't catch me. He may, he may try to grab me, but guess what? Whoop, and keep right on running. You miss me. Finish strong. You know, we watch it all the time. Every time, you know, I'm going to move on. I'm going to say this and I'm going to move on. Um, growing up watching the Olympics, right? I, I think I started recognizing um, the Olympics and great runners back when Carl Lewis was running. Everybody remember Carl? Most of us probably, no, I can't even say most of us when I look at the crowd. <laughs> but through history, most of us probably know who Carl Lewis is. All right, I actually got to witness Carl Lewis run. All right, and so Carl Lewis, man, he did what I thought nobody else can do. Boom, run that 10 second 100 meter. Boom, run it. I was like, wow, I was blown away. I was like, man, that record ain't gonna never be broken. That man, he, he's the greatest runner of all time. That's what I claim. He's the greatest runner of all time. Nobody never run faster than that man. 10 10. I think he ran about 10 10 10 9 at that time. Boom, boom. Ran it pretty stride. And when he finished that line, he was still in stride. Looking good. Because he prepared for it. And he set records because he prepared for a race. And then after, uh, um, then after Lewis, he tried to stay in there a little while, but it didn't <laughs> quite work out for him. But after Lewis, I believe it was, uh, help me out, somebody, Green? Maurice Green, I think it was. It probably was somebody else in between there, but I'm, I'm just saying it as I remember. Then I remember Maurice Green, and, and, and he came in, and boy, I just thought, oh, he ain't going to beat Carl. You can't beat Carl. You know, I don't care how fast you are. Boom. Ran that race and beat him and broke his record. Ran in the low 10s, the 10-5, 10 10 3s. Look like, oh, my God, what is going on? These guys are marvelous. Nobody ain't going to never beat that. Now, that's somebody be called, but nobody ain't going to never beat that record. <laughs> nobody, Jack. And then all of a sudden, we got not only uh, Usain Bolt. Yeah, I know y'all know who he is. Usain Bolt, not just him, but in, in a cup, Ben Johnson, who was on drugs, though. You know, the way he ran, <laughs> you know, using steroids, whatever. But these guys, man... Not only did they, not only did they beat that ten, that low ten three, low ten, they ran less sub par ten. They running nines, and not just a high nine, but they running mid nines. And I'm thinking, how fast do you have to be to run a nine five, a low nine, man? Come on, people, come on, let's think about that. That's a hundred meters. You know, that's ten increments of ten meters. So if you're going to run that in less than 10 seconds, that means you're running 10 meters under a second. You understand? I don't even know if you know how, how fast that is. But that is fast, Jack. That is fast. If, if you put it in car time, I think I did the math one time. If you put that and convert that and put that in distant times rate and all that stuff, you do that. That's the car speed of like greater than 28 miles an hour. For that period of time, he's running about 28 miles an hour or better. Come on, somebody. That's incredible. But one thing I'm going to say, ain't nobody going to beat that. Somebody going to beat it. (laughs) Maybe a long time, but somebody going to beat it. But when I was defining race, defining race, talking about competition, all those things, and I thought about Webster's uh, definition, but Kaylee, here's where... You spoke today, and it, and it blessed me. And the father asked me, he said, how do you, me, how do you define the race? And I thought about it, and, and the word responsibility came to mind. And I thought, the race that I choose is a responsibility. It's the responsibility that I choose to take on. And even Matt was talking today. He was saying, man, I hope you heard what you were saying. I hope you really meant what you were singing because there are consequences to the things that you're singing. I'd rather not sing it. I'd rather not mean it. I'd rather not put my hands to the plow than to sing it, start my race, 
and not complete it. You have to be honest with yourself. You have to know, have you put the proper preparation into your, into your race that's upset before you? Before you put your toes on the line. See, right now I look pretty bad going out there trying to run 100 meters. <laughs> I could get down, I can look as pretty as I want to, but I ain't ready. I, I barely, he's off. <laughs> he on both legs. <laughs> Hey <laughs> man, you know and that's real. Why? Because there's no preparation in me. That's nothing that has prepared me for the hundred meters. You know, but if I was serious, I probably would never run it. We we know it'll never be ran like I could have run it one time. But there's a preparation that I could put in. There's a preparation. There's a place I can get to that when I run my race, I can come across that finish line pretty. Woo. Might not break no record, but I can come across pretty. I ain't got to be, oh God, I ain't got to be ugly with it. I can come across pretty and I can come in full stride and I can run my best time ever. Because of the preparation that you put in it, because of knowing the works and faith working together, knowing the responsibility that you're about to take on. Bless the Lord. All right. Knowing that the faith that you're about to take on, understanding that any race that you take on, it is responsibility. You know, it's not just something that uh, that you just decide. You you don't say yes. You just don't, you know, uh, decide that you're going to get into something and, you know, well, if I get tired and, and, you know, the Lord, he understands. No, he don't. Come on, somebody. He understood that you said yes. He understood that you promised him that you was going to complete this race. He understood that you said, if you send me, Lord, I go. He understands that part, but he does not understand when you, oh, you know, maybe tomorrow. He don't understand that because that's disobedience. He don't understand witchcraft. He don't understand the things that are not like him. He don't even see that. Come on, somebody. He don't even see you at that point. Why? Because you just became a liar and they won't even dwell in my eyesight. I won't even see you. But when I accept the responsibility, it's not about how fast I run it, but it's about how much I endure. Am I able to endure whatever this race requires of me? Have I made the preparation in order to complete the race? Have I considered the cost? Have I counted up the cost? Woo. my race I'm going to talk about my greatest race and though it's natural but it's spiritual as well my greatest race is is my life as a as a father and as a husband and as a son that's my greatest race that is the race that defines who I am. That's what I'm all about right there. You know, <clears throat> wow. And sometimes it is, it's, it's hard when you don't know what defines you. So I'm very thankful and I'm moved because I understand what defines me as a man. That was a time in my life when I didn't. I thought I thought my ability to be an athlete I thought my ability to to be the fastest to be the strongest physically was the thing that defined me so when that opportunity was removed from me there went my definition there went my identity and so now it's like what now what now and so I thank God because I always had a background of loving him seeking him knowing who he is getting to know the father I had a, 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 a my mother and my my grandmother were always 
strong women, women of God. And they weren't as well versed as, you know, we are, we are blessed to have, you know, our leader here today. But, man, they would say some things, and, and I hear it all the time in the thing that our leader says here. You know, uh, I probably I said this before, but <laughs> it was all the way up into college. I didn't even know what the nomination was. I couldn't even define that for you. My grandmother used to tell me, son, it's either holiness or hell. That's what she used to say to me. Y'all excuse me. <clears throat> That's what she used to say to me. Grandson is either holiness or hell. And even though she wasn't a, 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 a hell, fire, brimstone preacher, but that was the ideal that she had. So either you're going to love God or you're not. If you love him, you love him with all your heart. You seek after him with everything that you have or you get out of the way. She used to have a saying that used to be so funny to me. She used to always say, take your sign down. <laughs> Either you're going to live right or you're not. Don't perpetrate this life. So if you're going to love God, love him. But if you're not going to love him, take your sign down. Don't look like a church. Don't act like a church. If you're not loving God, take it down. That's what she used to say. She said, it's better for you, boy, that you not do anything than to mess with this and not live it all the way. She said, son, I'd rather see you just be a straight sinner than to be in the strata of fence. Son, is holiness a hell. And so I used to hear that from her so much that even when I went to college and filled out my application, and it's Assemblies of God <laughs> on top of that. I went to Assemblies of God's college and, and when it came to filling out the denomination, first of all, I had no idea what the word meant. I didn't even know what the word meant. So I was like, wow, what is that? <laughs> so I guess, you know. I wrote holiness. That's what I wrote and I said, I'm a holiness. <laughs> That's all I knew. I said, well, I'm holding. My grandma always told me he's a holiness of hell. So I, I would shoot. I'm holiness. That's what I want to be. At Assemblies of God Church, I'm holiness. You know? That's what I put in there. And and until and still today, that's still a part of me. That's what this house is. There ain't no straddling the fence, Miss Kim. Ain't no, it, ain't no false signs out there. Matter of fact, the sign that's out there, you, it makes you curious because you wonder, the rock, what's the rock? But that's what it is. It's the rock, man. It's that place you can come and you can find a solid foundation. You can begin to learn God and know who God is and develop a relationship with him that will cause you to be prepared for the race and for the thing that you're about to partake of. If you will listen, if you will hear, if you allow yourself to be engaged, if you allow yourself to be, become a part of even the strange things, the things you don't understand. Because even me, y'all, I sometimes I don't understand it. But I'm obedient. I love that saying. He said it years ago. And I forget, uh, I think it was Living with the Father series. I don't know how many of you remember that but way back when I first started he, he was preaching a series called Living with the Father and one of the things he said in that that came out of that for me is that obedience does not require understanding obedience to the Father does not require understanding your faith, your preparation for this race, your moving in this race, you're flowing in this body, you're flowing in the spirit and understanding the things of the spirit and preparing for the race before you don't require your understanding when you are in the midst of the race sometimes we're hindered completing the race because we stop because we don't understand man I don't understand why I gotta run this way when I can run that way 
That way I can see that's lit up and that's nice and pretty. This way is dark. I don't know where I'm going. So I'm going to sit here and make sure the Lord told me to run that way before I run. <laughs> but if, he, if I just keep moving, if I was to keep moving, in spite of what I see, in spite of what I understand, if I continue to be obedient, guess what? There's a reward for me. There's a completion for me. Amen. So my, my, my greatest race is, is that of a father, of a husband, you know, and being a son, you know, and, and I'm thankful because of, you know, who my kids are and, and how they know the Lord and how they love the Lord and just the things that they are accomplishing in the spirit along with your kids and those that are joined to this house just seeing how the spirit moves in them in such a way that it didn't have the it, it had the ability but it, it something it didn't have the same freedom when I was that young you know maybe there was something that the father wanted to do in me he wanted to pioneer in me but I was so caught up into the way it's done the religious part of it that many times that when it's got too awkward you know I start to question well you know God don't do that he don't move like that that's foolishness you know, I, I have more wisdom than the Spirit did. But I thank God because he, he took me away from that. And he began to make me. He began to mold me. First of all, he had to break me. He broke me. He delivered me from those things. He ripped me away from those things. And in, in, in the ripping away from those things, he took me away from my family. He took me away from all the things that I love, all the things that I was familiar with. He just ripped me and he began to break me in this strange place. It's one thing to be broken in comfort, but it's another thing to be broken in a strange place. I was broken in a strange place. I'm in the midst of my race, y'all. By this time, I'm married. I'm married, and I'm a father trying to figure this thing out, trying to learn how to love my wife, learn, trying to learn how to love my son, not to say that I didn't love him, but love him in the proper way. You know what I'm saying? Not love him like by all the examples that I saw because if I was to walk according to the examples that I saw then it wasn't working but so I had to figure this thing out in a strange place I had to walk I had to move I had to run I had to be a covering I had to hear to learn to hear the father as he led me through these things learning how to be a father and a, and, and a husband on the run on the run, God, that's my greatest, that's my greatest race. He had begin after he broke me and messed me all up and I looked like just a big pile of something sitting there. He began to define me. He began to mold me and make me in that moment, in that time that I was running. And the one thing I had, you know, I, and, and you talk about, let's talk about the preparation of it. It was always in my heart. He prepared me a long time ago for fatherhood and to be and, and how to be a husband why because it was in me right. he, he prepared me through all the mess that I witnessed all the heartbreaks all the divorce all the shacking for even from the people that I thought they would never do it no that ain't gonna happen with them boom there it was all the disappointments you know I saw that and each time I saw it I said I don't want that. I'm not doing that. That's not me. And so I began to run. And so when I entered into that thing that I desired the most, I began to run. But guess what? Even though I know that wasn't what I wanted, I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't even know how to achieve the things that I wanted. But one thing I did, I began to run and I had a heart. I had a mind that I was determined. I don't care how fast, how slow, how heavy, how great. I'm not giving up. I'm not losing it. I'm not going to let it go. And right now, I can see the reward. I see the reward. Thank you. I see the reward in my sons and in my daughters. <laughs> That's my least favorite. <laughs> I was just kidding. I was just kidding. <laughs> 
I was just kidding. No, that's my baby girl. That's my girl right there. <laughs> but even the relationship that I have with my wife, you know, the ups and downs that that in itself brings, you know, as well as being a father, learning how to be a father, but also being a father that allowed her to be comfortable allowing me to be a father. There's a, there's a, there's a lot of dynamics in that, man. There's a lot of dynamics in that. You know? And not only that, but then at the same time learning to be comfortable as a father. Learning to be comfortable as a husband. You know, not only that, but learning who she is and, and, and becoming wide enough to cover her and the things that she is. She's not ordinary. I can tell you that right now. There's nothing about my wife that's ordinary. And I mean that in the best of ways. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I don't know. You, you got the email? You got that text? As a matter of fact, me, me my wife, and, and, to, and, and see it, we was at, we was at the car lot. You know, she had an accident, so, you know, she was able to go get herself another car. And so as we was going through, and that guy needed some paperwork that we didn't quite have. Well, my wife... <laughs> was supposed to go over, look up her information, print it off, and get out of the way. Well, before you know it, my wife went over there. Not only was she on the computer, she had been on the computer for about 20 minutes, sitting at the man's desk, waiting, <laughs> doing what she had to do. And, and so Sid finally said, Dad, look. I look over there, she's sitting in the man, and the man's standing up on the other side of the desk trying to do what he needs to do. But she's sitting in his chair at his computer while he's over here trying to figure out what he needs to do. And I'm thinking, come on now. That's not ordinary. That's not ordinary. That's what she does. You know, if you give her any part of something, she's not going to do an ordinary job with it. She's not going to take it and do just enough with it. But she's going to take it in, man, she's going to see it and she's going to make that thing become everything it could possibly become. And before you know it, you enter something else because this thing has stressed out so much that it's birthed something else. And so I had to learn how to become that kind of covering. Not be intimidated by the person that she is. Come on, somebody. See, my idea was, I'm going to go get a good job. And I'm going to work hard at my good job. I'm going to make sure my job has benefits and a retirement plan and all those things. And, and, and baby, you go to college, you go on to get you a little degree or whatever and, and do what you want to do. And when you finish your degree, now I'm serious, this is my plan. When you get your degree and you do what you got to do and then guess what? I move away a little bit, then I go ahead and finish up my degree. And then we have our degrees, you know, here in the next five, ten years. That's my ten-year plan. We're going to have our degrees and we're going to be what we are. You know, we're going to live comfortably. We're going to retire from somebody's job. That's how far I thought I needed to stretch. But I can tell you right now, I'm still working on my degree. I ain't got my degree yet. I'm still working on it now. Don't mean I won't get it. But I've been so busy stretching, trying to becoming a covering for her. Come on, somebody. Woo. That's a consistent race. That's a consistent run. There is no end to my borders. Why? Because there's no end to the amount of covering I need to be for this young lady. And guess what? I'm mad enough. I'm bad enough. I'm godly enough to be exactly what she needs me to be. I am not intimidated by who my wife is. I am not intimidated by the things that, 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 that goes through her mind. You know, I remember when she used to talk to me about things, I used to be like, the first thing I say, oh, Lord, here we go again. <laughs> this woman ain't going to never get a normal job. <laughs> I said, really? I was like, man, I'm going to be on this job forever. <laughs> I'm serious. That was my mindset. 
But when the father delivered me from that mindset, guess what? He began to stretch my borders. He caused me to be so wide. He caused me to be so deep, so high, that there's no place he could go and be outside of who I am. And my father, he's so wide, he's so deep, he's so high, there's no place I can go and be outside of him. Why? Because I choose to dwell. As I'm running, I'm going to stay in the shadow. I'm never going to come out of the shadow. Why? Because there's so many things that's underneath me that I'm covering, that I'm responsible for. And my sons and my daughters, as they was growing up, the things that they wanted to be, the things that they desired to stretch out and be, I had to be a covering for them. I had to be wise enough to direct them, but at the same time allow them to become who they are. Never discouraging them. Never beating what the father put in them out of them. Sometimes as parents, I've seen it. I watched it. We become so um, afraid of what we don't know. What we do, we beat the desire out of our kids. We lock them up. We, we, We cause them to think less of themselves so that they can be under our control. Why? Because our borders are so shallow. Now, that ain't how we do it. This is how we used to do it. Now, you get your body back over here and this board over here. And so the first chance a child gets whenever they, 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 that's why, you know, I, I don't care, man. You go to college, any college in America, small town, big town, them freshmen, See, I ain't gonna talk too much, but they wait on the freshmen. I'm gonna put it like that. Because they know that many times they're running from borders. And when they get to a place that they can get outside of the borders, they gone. They loose. I'm telling you. And, 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 And those that has been there a little while, takes advantage of them running outside of that covering running outside of that border for real but we but you know what I thank God because of my borders of my understanding realizing they ain't gonna do it the way I did it but I'm gonna be a border that's wide enough that they stay in the covering that they continue to know who the father is as they become who they become that's the race I'm running that's the race that I'm defined by that's who I am I'm a tower to my family I'm wisdom I'm strength I'm everything that they need to be and without a doubt that's my race that's who I become and let me tell you this and I'm saying this and I'm closing in this your race is not one fold my race is not one fold your race will have many layers every time you run you think you're never running just one race you're never just running one set course who are you because you're not uh, one dimensional God is not one dimensional if you're created in his image man how many dimensions does the father have so as many dimensions as you as many dimensions as the father is and you becoming more like him guess what you're going to have right. multiple dimensions and if you keep running you'll see every one of them and as one end in one dimension another one's going to start so that I don't really believe you're going to find the end to your race so stop running looking for an end I believe I ran on to see what the end is going to be. We used to sing that. Yes. Growing up, that used to be a congregation of songs we were saying. Believe I run on, see what the end is going to be. Believe I run on, see what the end is going to be. And we used to, woo, we get up and we, woo, we shout to it and everything. Yes, sir. You used to get, get with it, boy. Hold my mule. <laughs> but the more I know the Father, the more I realize ain't no end there's no end because there's no beginning there's no end because there's no beginning 
There's no defining moment as where he begins. So if I'm like him, guess what? Then there's no end. But the race I'm running, I'm going to run with patience. I'm going to run with endurance. I'm going to run with faith. And every race is going to prepare me for the next one. And I'm just going to endure. I'm going to endure as a good soldier. Because I love him. Because there's something I'm trying to become. Every round takes me higher. Every round causes me to be closer to him. 